It's the Blues Rock Show with Pete Francis and Willie Witten. Welcome to the Blues Rock Show. I'm Pete Francis, joined by everybody's favorite blues rock analyst, <laughs> Willie Witten, doing the thing. Always doing the thing, Willie. Yeah, just it's a good way to get things going. I feel like it sets me up for a good show. Yeah, the T-shirts are coming soon with Willie going like this, his signature. <laughs> All right, Willie. So a lot of bands are getting back on the road and a lot of tour announcements have been happening in recent weeks. So I want to ask you this question. Now that bands are getting back on the road and touring, which band or artist do you want to see on the road the most in concert? Well, I got to say, it's really, there's so many bands I want to see. Obviously, we're music heads. We love this. We live for it. So I have to go with at least the first Thing I want to select from is a band that I've never seen live before. So we just announced, or we just put it up on the sites that Kingfish has announced his dates. He's making a trip down to Austin, which I'm pretty excited about. I might want to hit that show. I've never seen him, but I think the band, if I had to choose one that I want to see the most live and I've never seen them is the damn truth. I just, I can't stop listening to them. They're electric. They're mesmerizing. I, I just, there's something about them. After watching that live stream, all I can think of is packing a crowd of 15, 2,000 people into a great venue and just loving every minute of those guys. So I don't know. I know I've been talking a lot about them, but I've really enjoyed their stuff and I'd love to see them live. How about you, Pete? Who do you want? Yeah, I think that's a really good choice. I've never seen the Damn Truth in concert either, so I would love to see them. You mentioned Kingfish back on the road. I would love to see Kingfish again. I saw him one time. I saw him at the Dallas International Guitar Festival in 2019. He was absolutely fantastic, so I would love to see him again. Another artist that I would really like to see perform live is Richie Kotzen. Yeah. I've never seen him perform live. He's such a fantastic guitar player and really just fantastic everything. Yeah. So I would definitely like to see him live in concert because I've never seen him play before. I would also like to see Gary Clark Jr. live because okay. I have seen him before, but it's been like a really long time. I think I saw him in maybe 2012 or 2013. So yeah. basically... Shortly after the, the Bright Lights EP came out is when I saw him in concert. So it's been a really okay. long time. And that was probably one of the best concerts I've ever been to. So I would like to see Gary Clark Jr. as well. Yeah, you know, I think he's a great choice. When you mentioned Richie Kotz, and that sort of triggered something in my mind, too. I had forgotten about him for a brief moment, but I'm in the same boat. I've never seen him live. And my gosh, that, you know, not just the work that he's done recently, but I think because of the pandemic, he never got to tour behind that 50 for 50 album. Yeah. I mean, that's to me, that's just nutty to sit down for one year and to come up with 50 songs. And honestly, like some are better than others, but they're all pretty darn good. Just how prolific that is. And like you said, he's a, just a great musician. He plays a bunch of things. And I'd also then like to see who he picks to play with him. Because obviously it's one thing when you're recording, you can step over here to the bass, you can step over here to the keys if you have that ability like he does. But when you're live, you got to select some people. So going to see him would be interesting just to see who are his choices for who he wants to play with. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff. You just and I'd like to hear him play the Smith Cotson songs too. Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, there's just, the, the whole touring scene is getting back and so... I don't know. I still think I'm, I'm just because it's so raw in my mind. I'm still going to stick with if I had to choose one, I choose the damn truth. Um, but yeah, you can't go wrong. Kingfish, Kotzen, you know, we could go down with just letter by letter picking people that we'd love to see. So I don't know. It should be a great summer and fall and just getting back into this. That's from the live perspective, Pete. I want to talk about something that's maybe a little more digital. All right. You've heard of a band called Oasis, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And one of the brothers from Oasis, Noel Gallagher, is often very opinionated, as we know. And last week, we spoke about different social media outlets, which is best for artists, what is good for making money, sharing your work. I read something the other day, and it was a hot take. And Noel Gallagher had some very choice words 
But pretty much to sum it up, Pete, he said that the internet has ruined music. What do you think about that? He, he was not mincing words. He said everything is now garbage and it's because of the internet. Do you think that's true, Pete? Or is he being a little bit heavy handed? I can see some of his arguments about that for why he would think that. I think one of the reasons would be just all the negativity that the internet has created. Yep. I think that definitely is one of the downsides just so much negativity out there in terms of musicians. And, you know, I think anyone who puts themselves out there and puts their music into the world deserves some level of respect, you know, yes. whether you like their music or not, anyone that's giving it a go, I think deserves some amount of respect. I agree. So I, I think, you know, obviously the, the negativity, he, his argument too, though, was basically that artists are getting their break too quickly. Yeah. And that things are coming too easily for them. Here's the thing. The, the internet and why I would disagree that the internet is a bad thing is because the internet has leveled the playing field. Yes. You don't have to be on the biggest record label in the world to get recognized, to get your music out there. If you are a very smart marketer and also have the talent, you can make a, a name for yourself out there using yeah. the internet. And I think that's a great thing that you can get your music out there. And it's not just limited to, you know, your regional area, maybe where you could play gigs or just your country. Right. You can get out there to anyone. Yeah. Take Blues Rock Review as an example. Okay. This is an internet based website. Right. And we have people who check out Blues Rock Review from all over the world. Right. Say, you know, instead of Blues Rock Review starting 10 years ago, Blues Rock Review started 30 years ago. Right. Okay, say, you know, I'm 20 years older and I started it 30 years ago instead of 10 years ago. It would be much different because then I probably would have started it as a magazine, right? Right. We would probably have like no international base whatsoever. No, no way. And I think the same thing can be said for musicians. You know, you can build up that fan base. You can be an American musician and build up a fan base in Europe and go tour in Europe and do very well. Right. A lot of blues and blues rock artists do that because yes. they go to Europe where this music is a little more popular and it's appreciated a little bit more. So they can go fly over there and tour over there for a month or two and, and do very well. So I think having the internet at the end of the day, yes, there are some negative sides to it, but I think it helps musicians more than it hurts them. Yeah, and Pete, I, I agree with your take on it. I, I think that there's a bit of conflation going on, and I think it happens to all of us, is yes, the internet does have the ability to allow things that maybe we don't think are all that great. And yes, it has given the ability for some people to not really learn how to play their instrument not really put in the time and the hard work to get good, really good at what they're doing. But that is not necessarily the fault of the internet itself. You know, you can go and use the internet, like you said, and what it's good for, and still work your tail off, write your songs, play your instruments, play until your fingers bleed. And in that case, you're doing just as well, perhaps, as you would have been 30 years ago. When I say just as well, talking about your craft, but like you said, on top of it, then you have unlimited reach. I think because what was also interesting to me in the article is Noel Gallagher has three kids and he mentions them in the article. I don't know how much of it is that he's now concerned for the well-being of his children in general, because like you said, there is a lot of hate and anger on the Internet. So the way that you and I look at this and the way that he's looking at it might be a little different because, yeah, he was talking about music, but there's a part of me that thinks that he's in a way a little bit maybe like a scared father because he sees some of the damaging things that take place on the Internet. So I don't know if when we get Noel Gallagher on the show, we'll ask him then, Pete. But sounds like a plan, Willie. Yeah, I think he was being a little heavy handed and you may have caught him on a, a rough day. So, yeah. I agree. Now, Willie, a while back, we had a topic on the show 
about guitars, acoustic or electric, which would you prefer if you could only choose one? So now I'm going to ask you a different question that's kind of similar, though. Okay. If you had two choices for the rest of your life, all right. Either you can play music and play guitar, but you can't listen to anything else. The only music you could listen to is your own playing and you playing, or you can still listen to anything you want, but you can never play again. What would be your choice? <laughs> Pete, that's an impossible question. <laughs> So that's why pretty, we ask it, Willie. <laughs> so you're pretty much saying is like right here, right now, that's it. You will never throw in Zep 4 ever again. You will never get to listen to Stevie Ray Vaughan. Not a note, but I can continue to play. Or, oh, I'm sorry, I can't play. But if I choose to play, then I can never listen to anyone ever again. Correct. Pete, I think, I mean, gosh, I, I'm, I guess I'm going to go, if I had to, gun to my head, I'm going to have to make the choice, I think, that I'm going to choose to listen to others. Because as much as I love playing, and I really do, it's a lot of fun, it's a great outlet, it, it, it's a wonderful way to be able to express yourself and just exercise a different part of your mind. I'm looking around my room right now and I'm taking a look at some of these posters. I don't think I could go the rest of my life without hearing some of the great, great music that's been played. So there are so many greater players, so many greater writers than I ever will be. Times all of them, I have to be able to continue to listen to them, Pete. How about you? Are you going to tell me you're going to never listen to a note again? I love to play guitar. It's a very therapeutic thing yeah. and it, it feels great. <laughs> However, I would say I would probably give up the guitar and listen to others because th there's only one of me and you know, it's right. super, super fun to play guitar, yeah. but at the end of the day, giving up listening to everything else, I don't think I could do that. And think about how many other things that affects. It's not just you listening to an album, right? You're watching a movie. Oh, there's no music in that movie now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Commercials, TV shows. Oh, there's no music in those things now. I mean, that would lessen the value of all of those things as well. Yeah. I mean, think about that. You're just out at a restaurant or a bar or something or a social yeah. gathering. There's no music. It's like a bad Twilight Zone episode. I mean, just imagine living a life like that. Now, okay. it would definitely hurt to not be able to play guitar or play an instrument ever again. But I think it would hurt a lot more people, you know, if you didn't have all that other stuff out there. I, you know? and, I really like this question, Pete. And honestly, I don't know who we want to unfurl this on, but I think the next time we get like a real serious, like, you know, you and me, we like to play. But like, if we had to pose this to, let's say once again, a kingfish, I mean, now he's a guy where if he stops playing, the world's going to be disappointed. If I yeah. stop playing tomorrow, no one's going to care. All right. <laughs> but if Kingfish stops playing tomorrow, you're going to have a bunch of people saying no. <laughs> but you also then wonder, as great as he is, he obviously loves to listen to music, too. I, I, you know, what? I want to ask him. I want to ask him what he would choose. Because that's, that, that's just a huge sacrifice for yeah. anyone who enjoys music. And for him, it's also his livelihood. Yeah. But then he'd have to choose like all the great stuff you've listened to your entire life, Kingfish. Done. That's it. So you better, you know what, Kingfish? So you better book some dates because that's all the music <laughs> you're going to have. Well, you know what I think I would do, Willie, is before I answer the question, I would play a ton. And then after I, I kind of <laughs> feel like I've played enough, then I'm like, okay. Okay, that's not that's a decent strategy to like get out all your plane, but you yeah. know that won't work. You know <laughs> no, it won't, like... <laughs> but I mean it sounds like the best option. Yeah. Okay, so we both agree we're taking the music of Here, all Here's the good thing though, Willie. We, this is not a question or a scenario that we're actually going to have to encounter. At least we don't think so. Oh, phew. I thought this was gonna be I thought you were gonna show up at my doorstep and come and start taking all my music equipment out. <sighs> uh, not yet, Willie. Not, not yet. yet. Okay, I do want to, you know what? 
That is a question I think everyone who listens to and loves and plays music should ask themselves. I don't know. Like, I want to ask some real musicians this question now, Pete. That's a good one, man. That's a good way to wrap things up. Yeah, Maybe guys. So what do you think? What would you do? Let us know down in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you guys on this question because we think it's a really tough one, obviously. So be really interested to hear what everyone has to say about that. All right, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the like button. But for now, he's Willie Witten. I'm Pete Francis. This is the Blues Rock Show. We'll see you next time.